Good morning, folks. We've got four top stories to hit today, space weather and a volcano. But first, for all of the calls for me to leave this platform or begin posting elsewhere, you deserve to know it's not going to happen unless they make me. Same with Facebook. The fight is not inside an echo chamber. I don't blame your soul if it can't handle the fight anymore. But that fight is here, Facebook and Twitter. If I go down, our websites are here, space weather news and suspicious observers, and we'll be back before you know it. Until then, no desertion, no fear. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun were technically calm, but there is quite a bit to see now in addition to the coronal holes. Near the one o'clock position, a filament started to dance, and as you might have noticed, we've got an incoming active region. It is crackling, surrounded by plasma filaments, and unlike the tiny little sunspots turning across the Earth-facing portion of the sun's southern hemisphere, we do have size to the one incoming. Indeed, this is the surviving active area and perhaps even the surviving lead sunspot now on its third pass around. We'll get a better view of it here tomorrow. Quick note on the solar wind, if only to point out the purple, we are under 300 kilometers per second in the plasma stream, which is considered very weak. We're calm geomagnetically. Mount Semeru up next. Indonesia's highest volcano erupted magnificently yesterday, which helps us figure out why that magnitude 6.2 the day before ended up being so bad. The short version is that a lot of damage did occur and deaths as well, but a 6.2 there shouldn't have done that. Two days ago we said as much. But rather than the magnitude being wrong, which was my initial guess, perhaps it was instead the different ground movement under a magmatic driven quake, which is indeed not the same as a standard fault rupture. No injuries from the volcano reported at this time. Let's go out to space next, where we've looked at many of the reasons why the standard cosmology cannot be correct. From the timeline to the missing matter hiding in plain sight, to the magnetic field influence to the setup of galaxies. Here, Mueller, Pulowski, and their team are in astronomy and astrophysics with a confirmation review on years of identifying this specific conflict between cosmology and galactic satellites. Up next, the results are in from the year-long study of the atmospheric electric patterns, and not that we really needed it, but we have enough global studies to confidently say the global electric circuit is indeed a pattern that holds across the world. The current comes down in fair weather, high pressure, accumulating on atmospheric layers, aerosols, clouds, and the crust. It is returned upward in low pressure, lightning, volcanoes, and earthquakes. Now that was one of the newly discovered ways the sun can quickly force the entire sky, but let's take a moment to review the big science and climate of the last year, including the beginning of 2021 here. Models are way too oversensitive to CO2. The aerosol and cloud uncertainty is causing wild variation, and again, mostly towards the warm bias. We've seen that melting of the polar ice is an excellent way to trigger an ice age from either the north or the south. The grand solar maximum of the last 60 or 70 years is over. The record low volcanic cooling of the last century is coming to an end, and when they try to use modern climate models backwards into the past, we find the errors propagated by the aforementioned rejects from propagandized climate discourse to be extreme. Today, top-tier geophysical journal confirming in yet another avenue that the climate models being used today are vastly overselling the fear of a future warm on Earth. In fact, we just went over part of why what's coming in the future is cold. So when we get another one of these major papers in a major journal claiming paleoclimate disagreement and that the global warming projections are too large, yeah, that's an understatement. Last but not least, we're going out to Proxima Centauri. It is the nearest star to Earth and part of the Alpha Centauri system. It recently expressed some interesting radio signals, and right now there's two things you can find online about it. People saying it could be aliens, and astronomers suggesting it's an interaction between Proxima's planet and itself. That is the subject of this new paper here, but if you will recall, when we discussed this radio signal upon its discovery a while back, we suggested another option. As observers know, the galactic sheet trigger of Earth's catastrophe cycle appears to be changing the entire solar system already. The nearby red dwarf stars have already activated both Proxima and Barnard. We don't expect Alpha Centauri A or B to activate given their powerful fields and shared space protecting each other, but Barnard has been active since its activation, so why should we not see changes continuing on Proxima after its record outburst a few years ago? Folks in the Cosmic Disaster playlist on our channel page, you can learn more about how all the planets are changing, the stars nearby are activating, 
and why we are probably next. We greatly appreciate your support. Major involvement from you guys in Observer Ranch likely begins this week. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.